of Leah Remini. By 1989, 19-year-old Leah Remini had dropped out of school in order to pursue an acting career. Now, she was placing all her hopes on getting what looked like the role of a lifetime. ABC was planning a spin-off of their hit series, Who's the Boss? And Leah was up for the role of a streetwise young model from Brooklyn named Charlie Briscoe. They were looking for a girl just like her, you know, somebody feisty, somebody that, you know, had attitude. I even told my mother, if I don't get this part, then maybe this is not for me, because it's perfect. There was a lot riding on, on Living Dolls, and the network was really, you know, banking on, on the show being a, a franchise for them. There was like seven auditions, and I had already picked out a plane for my mother, and a Jaguar for everybody that I knew in my lifetime, and... I was already, in my mind, I had the part. Leah was right. She had finally landed the role that would take her out of her day job. She wrote a note to the office, you know, okay, that's it, I'm out of here. I'll never be seeing you guys again. I've got my big break. I'm showing up at Wardrobe on Monday. See you around. For her to be able to land a job of that stature was a major coup. Putting that kind of responsibility on someone with that level of experience really said a lot about what the network and what people like Tony Danza and, and everyone else thought about Leah's ability. But there was one hitch. They wanted her to look more like a model. They made me lose 25 pounds. They told me they, hired me, they would give me a trainer. I was like, all right, you know, no problem. In the fall of 1989, a picture-perfect Leah Remini went to work on Living Dolls. The show starred Michael Learned as an agent who takes in four young models, played by Leah, Allison Elliott, Deborah Tucker and Halle Berry. When Leah got Living Dolls, she just took it very, very seriously. She knew she had a learning curve and she just, you know, went at it. So what's the big deal? So 16 years and nine months ago, my mom and dad had one warm moment. Oh, gee, I would have given you a party. Oh, yeah, we'll do it next year. But you better make sure you clear it through my mom and Trish because people fall all over themselves to celebrate my birthday. There's a lot of skilled actors in this town. But it's the ones that bring that something extra to it that really excel. And Leah has that in her persona. I mean, she's great looking, she can act, and she has a unique delivery. You know, I was thinking, <laughs> here we are living together. How well do we really know each other? Get lost. And she goes with that, and she's confident with that, and it, it sets her apart. And she's had it from day one. <laughs> she was amazing. She was a natural. And it was the perfect part for her. Tough girl with the heart of gold. It sounds corny, but it's true. I polish the silver, I wash the windows, and I beat the rugs. Oh, you didn't have to beat the rugs. No, I wanted to. I pretended they were Caroline. <laughs> That's what I do. Get it. <laughs> the show got off to a promising start, but the ratings soon dropped and Living Dolls was canceled after only 12 episodes. She was sad. She thought that was it for her career, you know. Um, she was very much into it. She loved it. She loved um, working with everyone on the set. I, again, didn't know anything about cancellations, and I just assumed we were going to be on forever. Unfortunately, Leah had to ask for her job back at the insurance company. For Leah, she may have felt like it was rough coming back after thinking, that's it, I've made it, because that's like coming back into regular life again and not having a set to go to every day, and you know, that's a little disappointing. But I think at the same time, it just gave her more resolve. Despite her temporary setback, Living Dolls had put Leah on the map, and it wasn't long before she picked up her next gig, playing Ray Sharkey's younger sister in the sitcom Man in the Family. Uncle Sam! the most important meal of the day. Right, because if you're not home for breakfast, your big brother punches out your date. <laughs> but Leah missed the supportive atmosphere of her previous on-screen unit. There wasn't a lot of love. There was a little bit of like a rah from other, you know, crew, cast members and a little bit like that bickering, you know. So it didn't, it didn't make for fun, a fun work environment. It toughened me up a little bit, you know. I was like the you know, the little one of the group, and I was learning a lot. <laughs> I was crying a lot, but in the end, I was learning a lot. Kid's no good. His whole family's no good. Well, if his whole family's no good, how come you went out with his two sisters, his Aunt Rose and his grandmother? <laughs> Ma! 
It was also, I think, an odd time for Leah. You know, there was, it was a period where she was sort of in that flux of being adolescent and being an adult. Man in the Family was also canceled after just a few episodes. But Leah was now a working actress and moved directly onto a recurring role in Saved by the Bell. Saved by the Bell was paid my rent. It was, it was a fun experience. It was certainly quite popular. So Leah had a six-episode run as Stacey Carosi, so Mark Paul Gosselaar's love interest. I'm looking for uh, Leon Carosi. What do you want to see that jerk for? Because that jerk's my father. People still talk about her as Stacey Carosi. The fact that that made such an impression on people just shows that sometimes a character just pops off the screen. I'm sorry. You see, I'm from the East Coast. Was that California humor, dude? Were you being awesome and gnarly? <laughs> Yeah, well, next time... Still, to this day, people go, say by the bell. I saw you on that. Okay. It was good for me in that way. That I love when people recognize me. It doesn't matter if it was from a, a tampon commercial. I mean, it's nice. After Saved by the Bell, Leah went on to more recurring roles in shows like Cheers and Evening Shade with Burt Reynolds, always playing a streetwise big city girl. She's a tough, bossy, loudmouth type character, just very New York. For me, it was a comfort level. I felt comfortable playing those characters. It doesn't bother me to be typecast. Leah is nowhere near as tough as her characters are or as she likes to think she is. I think that Leah is basically a big hard shell with a bunch of mush inside of it. By 1995, 24-year-old Leah had been working steadily for five years and had done more guest spots than she could count. But she did manage to have a little fun along the way. Oh, yeah, I was a total slut. Um, I mean, who doesn't have time for fooling around? I mean, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I went through my crazy time. It's okay. You know? Again, you learn from it. We didn't do the L.A. thing. We weren't going to premieres. You know, she's not like, hi, I'm Leah Remini. I'm on a show. She doesn't do that at all. I liked hanging out with my sister. My sister had the hookups anyway, you know? And, uh, yeah, like, she would always find the best-looking bouncer at a club, and then, like, all of a sudden, she's the mayor of that club. But Leah never lost sight of her dream of starring in her own series. People started to really think about her and talk about her. When pilot season would come around, she would have multiple situations, and she'd do pilots in first position, second position, you know, so we'd be backed up with that, looking for that one show that would really propel her. But I wanted a home. You know, because the more I did those guest spots and recurrings, I really made me want to be somewhere that I belonged. That was my show and my family. Next, Leah meets the man of her dreams. I hated Angelo. I was so mean to him. And later, she finds the family she's always wanted. We have a real relationship, you know? We fight, we argue, we love each other. When Lifetime's intimate portrait of Leah Remini continues.